as I mentioned, we do this uh, research and economic fact-finding for, for uh, Congress uh, in sort of our think tank role. We've done some major um, 332 investigations, uh, most recently on digital trade. We, we, I know you'll be d discussing that after lunch. James Stamps, who is uh, one of our senior uh, research analysts, is, uh, and has just been actually promoted to head the Advanced Technology Manufacturing Division, will be giving you um, some education on digital trade. Uh, but it's an important area, I think, and it's something that we worked with Congress as they initiated some research that we did in that area, which I think lay a lot of good groundwork for uh, the Trans-Pacific Agreement. Uh, as you know, the trading system has uh, relatively uh, good, a good set of rules for products, for widgets, concrete things, but when in a world where services and even some products are being delivered over the internet, uh, the rules are much, much less robust and uh, the TPP makes some major advances in that area, um, and so it's an important area for me to focus on. Uh, we've also done some work on the, uh, we do, uh, over the years, on the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act. I think that's an area that's kind of the flagship for, for the trade and development uh, agenda. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's a very bipartisan uh, program, and we have worked with USTR and with Congress to, to keep that uh, working and improving its ability to uh, promote economic development in Africa. And finally, we do uh, a lot of think tank kind of events in the sense that we'll do roundtables on economic development or trade facilitation. I think we're going to have one in about a month on trade secrets. So the extent that all of you are working uh, in your you know, partic particular industries and agencies, um, please keep an eye. We'd love to be uh, have you participate uh, as you develop your expertise and, and use us as a resource uh, for, for education and exchange of, of information and perspectives. So uh, just to conclude, we, we do a mixed bag of things, but we help enforce the rules of the road on trade agreements and uh, and do analysis of uh, trends uh, in trade for Congress and, and, and the President. Just to talk a little bit about some of the current projects that we've got going on where we're active, um, we'll be finishing and filing with Congress next Wednesday, the 18th, a uh, study on the probable economic effects of the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. Uh, which will be a long study. It will be released to Congress at the same time that it's released to uh, the public. Um, and we'll talk about sectoral effects and then overall effects on, on the U.S. economy of that, uh, uh, that agreement. It was required in the Trade Promotion Authority Act that Congress passed uh, earlier this year. And we had 195 days to do the report, so it's been busy hectic time at the commission, but uh, we will be finishing up that shortly. We had just, um, in April, submitted a report to Congress that was kind of interesting on the issue of U.S. trade with Cuba. Um, it was uh, requested originally by Senator Wyden on the Democratic side and wanted, to look, wanted us to look at the economic effects of removing the U.S. embargo on trade with Cuba, and then supplemented a, a bit later by Senator Hatch when he took over as chairman of the Finance Committee uh, to look at the effects of Cuban uh, restrictions, um, such as trade, the trade barriers and the infrastructure constraints in the Cuban market uh, to promoting trade between the two countries. Um, we found there's a lot of potential for increased U.S. exports in Cuba about $800 million of agriculture, uh, U.S. agriculture products uh, could potentially be exported to Cuba and, and an additional $1.2 billion of manufactured goods. So that's about $2, $2 billion of trade uh, that's out there as a possibility um, if, if and when uh, the political situation can be normalized between the two countries. Um, at, Right now, average ag ag agriculture sales to Cuba are only about $300 million uh, over the last five years. And I think our manufacturing sales are about $20 million. 
there, um, we, we looked at a lot of the challenges to exporting and doing business in Cuba. Uh, it's, a non, it's really is a non-market economy, lots of non-tariff trade barriers, institutional and infrastructure problems. Um, and we looked at about 10 areas of constraints, including the, the politicized economic decision making in Cuba, limits on owning private property, limits on owning property, limits on hiring employees, limits on obtain, obtaining permits and licenses to invest and do business there. They've got difficulties in their IPR coverage, it's, it's less than adequate, uh, particularly in the area of copyright and trademarks. Trade, state trading monopolies on importation, et cetera, et cetera. So there is, there's a, a good examination of all the different issues going on in, in the uh, Cuban market locally there. Uh, so I think that would ended up being a balanced report. It would be interesting to see whether uh, there is any movement. I think uh, it's most, most of the folks in the administration recognize it's going to take a long time to, to improve trade relations with Cuba. And then finally, I just wanted to mention the miscellaneous tariff bills. Um, I think I started my career in the, in the Hill and working on miscellaneous tariff bills, and, and we were at that time kind of behind the scenes giving advice to uh, the Ways and Means Committee and the Finance Committee on miscellaneous tariff bills. And fast forward a lot of years, we're now going to be an agency that's officially investigating, not investigating, but researching these bills to uh, give our comments and analysis on, on a package of bills to the, the Congress and we are working to set up a process where electro we'll have an electronic portal where uh, folks that want a miscellaneous tariff bill can actually apply and supply the appropriate information. Um, and so it's interesting setting up a new, a new uh, government process for this. We have no idea how many bills will be, be actually be submitted to us. Uh, we're hoping that our portal doesn't uh, have the same problems that the healthcare.gov had. <laughs> so we're working hard on that to, to make sure that it uh, stands up to the test of, of a lot of applications. Uh, just any of, the, any of you that are interested in that process, we're, we're looking to uh, be ready to invite petitioners to submit their uh, petitions around October 15th. The, the president is about to sign the legislation we expect it's to pass both houses. Um, and uh, then we'll try to uh, get uh, a list of, of all the requests that we receive so we can uh, publish those by January 15, 2017 and, and uh, get a package ready in the next months after that to send up to the Hill.